Hey everybody, welcome to the All-Stars. I'm Sal, and that is the All-Star of the show, Joshua Williamson, writer of Superman, Green Arrow, and more. Oh, the Energon Universe, Cobra Commander. Oh, Duke, awesome. so many comic books. And it's funny, like, I'm always working on stuff that, like, I, I don't talk about. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's funny whenever um, I talk to different people about what I'm working on, they list stuff, which also, thank you for mentioning Green Arrow. People always forget about Green Arrow. <laughs> Well, that's the we, thing oh, is like green. It's an ongoing this, book now. I'm not. We haven't announced that officially yet, but it is an ongoing book. Oh so crap! It, because it, it, it did get changed from a, a six issue to a twelve issue to an ongoing. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay on it. Uh, I have some, you know, obviously some stories to tell with the character, but you know, yeah, I think we're officially going to announce that in in our our time tomorrow. It's out oh, there. Okay, it got so it'll be already out there, but it'll be out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, because it's a it's a solid fun book, and it's like. Green Arrow isn't necessarily a blind spot for me, but he is a character mm. that I didn't regularly read. Like I read it like after the fact, you know, like I was like, oh, Kevin Smith's writing Green Arrow. I guess I'll read that. And then I read it and I enjoyed it and I moved on like Denny O'Neill. OK, I'm going to read Green Arrow. But like regularly, like I, I missed when he got blown up in the oh, plane I was reading with like, Superman. Uh, yeah. Right. Like that whole thing is still weird. I'm always like Superman would have saved him. But uh, like yeah. I um Green Arrow is funny because Green Arrow is like um, I'm trying to think of the right way to explain this. Green Arrow is like my rosebud sometimes because ah. when I was a little kid, it's funny. Like I think with all comics, when you start really talking about people's love of these characters, so much of it does come down to like there's a weird memory connection. Yes, 100%. you know, like when somebody loves a character, you can always figure out there's something that happened when they were reading it, a moment in their life that is associated with when they were reading that book. You know, and Green Arrow is one that's really funny like that because when I was a little kid, I had a Green Arrow toy. It was Superpowers toy, and I loved it. It was just, I, I really liked the look of it. I didn't know who the character even was, really. It was just, you know, it's here's a cool toy. Those and, Superpowers figures were so awesome. Dude, the rat, rat, rat. I had the, the, the Joker one, the Penguin one. Like, yep, it, same. Well, obviously, the, the heroes and stuff, but there were just little things about them that were rad. And, yeah. uh, but I had the Green Arrow one. I always remember my Aquaman one was in the driveway for some reason and he accidentally got ran over and he got, it was brutal. Like I was, I, I ran over him with my bike by accident, but what happened was with Aquaman was that I stopped on him. Like I realized what was happening and he basically skid a little oh, and no. I went to pick him up and like half his face was missing. <laughs> so listen, if I ever write Aquaman, that's a pitch <laughs> where like something happens, like black Manta hits him and half his face is missing. You know where that came from. So, yeah. With with Green Arrow, my Green Arrow toy went missing, and it haunted me. And so then, when I was a little older and I start reading comics, you know, I would pick up Green Arrow stuff and be like, "Oh, that's that character." And then I got like really, really into it. And then I got lucky that like obviously it was like a, just a good time in that book. Yeah. And, and you know, and then he dies. They introduce Connor. Connor's there for a bit, and then it was like. The rough part about the Connor stuff was it was consistently, it was a great book, but it was like consistently when is Ollie coming back? Oh, absolutely. Which is always, Mark Wade said this when uh, he was taking over Flash. Oh, he yeah. knew, <laughs> he, he says this, and if you ever get the Return of Barry Allen um, trade paperback, in the original one, there's an opening where he, the intro, he talks about this, where he's like, yeah. when he was going to job on the Flash, he knew the number one question he was going to get asked was, when is Barry coming back? Right. And and so he was like, well, let's bring him back immediately and then have a twist on it and then just bury that right out the gate. Um, and it was the same way with Connor Hogg. It's always like this. It's like whenever you do that, they're always like, well, that's the next question is where are they coming back? And yeah. I talked about this with Howard when we were doing with Howard Porter. We were on Flash together. The other people every once in a while would be like, where's Wally? Where's Wally? And Howard was like, I was trying the Flash with Jeff during the wally stuff and you know what i got asked all the time is where's barry so it's right. like it's just how it always works um anytime like you know that now that wally is the flash again whenever there's a new writer coming on or we're having a conversation i'm always like listen that know where that character is just in the back of your head like know where they are even if they're not <laughs> in the book as a main character if you're taking some of these characters people are going to ask you the thing i've learned about this is this is true of every character yeah. So when you start working on a book, somebody out there is going to ask you where this character is. Right. So just 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 think about it. Just have an answer. Like, you know, and so when I was on, when I got the job on Superman, I made a notebook, right? We talked before, I have, I have notebooks for every project, but I literally listed off like all his villains. Right. And his supporting cast and like stuff that was, uh, you know, people I kind of consider Supermanish characters like Lobo. 
like yeah. Lobo's on the list, you know, it's just like going through and then being like, okay, what would I do with these characters? And that's where like Bottle of the City of Lobos came from and all that. Yeah. Just make those to yourself because you never know when that might come around. But yeah. then also if you, you never know when that's going to come around again with like subplots, um, you can just see that stuff, you know, exactly. like, on the field. I think that's something, you know, we were talking about, marvel a lot on the last video yeah and i think it's one of the challenges now in comics uh versus before was that like and it's funny because i would hear this from editors where they would talk about subplots a lot and and i was like i like subplots but i think Me too about now where they're like hard to establish sometimes i they think it, it comes to a lack of patience like, yeah lack of patience is harder and it's like you know there are books that have really excel at it and i think it, it is something you go back and look at older books and you're just like, that book would not survive today. You know, no. uh, much less get like a 90 issue run. Dude. Well, that's what I, after we did the video last time, um, you know, somebody, it came up in the conversation. It was like, I feel like the universe tells you things sometimes, you know, big time. And it's like, uh, we were talking and somebody suggested new warriors in, in, <laughs> in the thing. And I was like, Oh, that's really oh, yeah. fine. I really do love new warriors. Like it was one of my favorite comics when it was coming out. And, um, you know, like that's a book that I got into a little bit later, but then I distinctly remember going and buying back issues of it and then catching up on the story and piecing things together and getting the, the bigger picture. Uh, but no worries. It's funny reading that book. I, I So after that, um, Hasbro announced they were doing a Justice toy. Yes. I think it might have been at the same time, but it was like, it made me think about New Warriors a bunch. And I actually have the two omnibuses for New Warriors. Yeah. So I was like, all right, let's do this. And uh, I started reading New Warriors. And just within a few issues, I was like, I'm not sure if this book would exist today. Hell like, no. I, or if this book, like, it's all these kind of like, you're just like, nope. Nope. <laughs> Editor Sal canceled. No, it's a, you know, but it's. You're new it's, canceled. That's what you should it, call it. New canceled. New canceled. It wants to be like young and hip and fun. And they're all so self serious and they're all just so they're like all very serious. They're all yeah, so well, happy. <laughs> it's funny. Actually, what was funny about that is like when I was reading that book, you know, I was probably like 11 or 12, you know, I, I, I don't know how long I, I mean, I read it the whole time. I was disappointed when it ended, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, I, when you're a little kid, you don't necessarily know what's old. Everything is old to you. Right. You know? Like yeah. you think about, uh, it's funny. I think about this sometimes where I'm like, when you're a little kid, you think about how old your teachers were. They were all old, like just old people. Yep. But then now as an adult, you're probably like, that person might've been like 30. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. No, I, I, I distinctly recall my history teacher being like, he, he wore his elderliness as a badge of honor, but looking sure. back, like he has to now be 90 years old. Right. Like, so if you start doing the math in your head, you start realizing, well, oh, he's, he's not actually that old at all. Or maybe he, yeah. Or he was. Yeah. But that's the thing about like, you know, yeah, I definitely had teachers that were probably younger than I thought. But everyone, everything was, old, everything was old. So when you're reading yep. that book, like, you know, it is funny how when you're a little kid, you have your understanding of what teenagers do. And that might not be reality. Right. And when you're a teenager, you have it, you have your understanding of what adults do. And that may not be reality. And then that leads upward. And even when you're in your twenties, you're like, Oh, I know what my forties are going to be like. And then you're like, yep. you're like, I'll be responsible by the time you're in your forties. <laughs> and in your forties, you're just like, should I work today? Or should I sit on the ground in my office and play with GI Joe toys? <laughs> You know, like I was yeah. uh, the, the other day. I got the this massive his tank, right? That has romance. It's huge, dude. Uh, yeah. It's this thing is big, and I um, I look. I was like, I have so much stuff to do, but you know what I'm gonna do right now? I'm gonna <laughs> this sucker open, and I'm gonna sit and play with it. And then my son came in here, and he was like, "Wow!" <laughs> he wanted to play with it, and then you're like, "Oh, it's over now. Today's a wash." Like, you know. But that's the like. You're like, am I responsible, <laughs> the or am I playing with toys on the ground? Eh, yeah. It's uh, but New Warriors, it's funny reading that book because it's like, yeah, it's really fun. I like it. Like, I still really like it, but I'm fascinated by reading it to be like, this book would not would not exist. And it's like, it is fascinating to think about, like, you know, and you made a joke before we jumped in, but it's like, Mark Bagley was drawing that and Spider-Man at the same time. Yep. Right? Yep. How is that possible? 
I know, right? And, it, and it's just as good. It's not like he's putting his A game over here and he's like letting this one slide. Like, no, he's it's just as good looking, which is why that sh- that book vexed me so much. I'm like, <laughs> but this this is this is Spider Man's New York. I'm looking at like th- as far as yeah. I'm concerned, this is what the what New York this is what the Marvel Universe looks like. But Spider Man's not in it at any point, and I'm confused and I'm upset. You know, yeah. Like, I, yeah, and then my... Scarlet Spider joined the team, though. And I, I forget this. You were you were you were anti Clone Saga, right? Like, I was very got... much anti Clone Saga. I yeah. uh, I so wasn't was even anti Ben. I was anti Ben, and I was anti Ben when he became Peter, and when Peter went to Oregon, I'm like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> this is the thing about that, right? Like, this goes back to the thing of like the ticking clock of when are they coming back? I don't yeah. think anybody believed that any of that, and that I... that gets tricky. It gets tricky because. I dealt with this with Dark Crisis. Where yeah. it's like, everybody knows they're not dead. I know they're not dead. We're not hiding that they're going to come back. So let's, you know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of yeah. like, but the characters themselves don't know this. They don't know they're in a comic book, you know? Right, right. Like, exactly. for Deadpool and, and, and a few other characters like Harley. <laughs> but, you yeah. know, it, it's, it's, they don't necessarily know they're in a comic book. Um, yeah. You, you should bounce that out, but yeah, working on that stuff. Oh yeah, I, I'm curious about what other books you jumped off of and why you jumped off. Oh of man, oh well, there's quite I've, a few. <laughs> well, see, I've fallen off of stuff before too, and, and a lot of times it came down to money. It was just it? like I yeah. can't afford this anymore. Um, I don't know if I've ever rage quit a book before, or if I've ever been like. Yeah, see your face. You're like, I've rage quit some books. Oh, I have to. You're uh, well, and and you're a Spider Man fan too, and I'm I'm surprised yeah. because I think that like as a Spider Man fan. It's not a question of like if you've ever quit Spider Man. It's what point made you quit at that time. Like I, I've quit twice, yeah. and they've both been <laughs> radical upsets of the status quo that insulted me as a re- like I felt insulted me as a reader. Like it wasn't like I, I've been upset or surprised. Like there, there are whole arcs of Spider Man pre modern age, and when I say modern age, I mean like when I started talking about them professionally. But like. Where, where I, I was I like, I this is a dud, but I'll just, you know, like, like there's a three issue book. I think it's in, I don't remember. I think it's in the, the adjective list series where he fought Electro. And I'm like, this could go like, I don't need so this. Time but... you're like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not reading this book as much as I would like to. Maybe I can check out on it. You know, I mean, there's, yeah. been, there's a couple of crater on books that I've gotten kind of far into like long running com- crater on books. I'm not going to say one of them, but there was oh. one particular that it got to a point where I was like, Ah, this isn't for me, you know. Like that you was... have those moments, but I will say with DC, I think enough time has passed that like I didn't rage quit or anything like that. But it was like you know I was like a hardcore DC reader and I was yeah. reading everything. But yeah, once you get around to like 2000, 2009, 2010, I was slowing down. But that was a money reason, right? right it was like right. you know we're in the recession. Um, you know I was struggling uh, with work, and it was like so I had a, a limited budget. And so it was like, I was doing a lot of mail order at the time. And so it was like, I had to be really picky about what I was getting. Yeah. And, and then new 52 happened. And I feel like I didn't rage quit reading DC comics, but I definitely shrunk down what I was reading, which you know? is the opposite effect of what they were looking for. <laughs> what they were looking for, but it's weird because I, I can never, I, I, I can't say I, I, I struggle with anyone says it was a failure because clearly when you look at the finances of it, it was not a, a failure. And you look Hell at no. some prayers that were made, you can never argue with the things that came about because of that. You you just can't, no. you know, you just can't call it a failure. And, and like those, those trades still sell really well. So it's like, you can't, you, you can't, but for me as a fan, like it definitely was a moment where I was conflicted because it's like, you and I had this conversation before where it's like sometimes we have these moments in comics where things really need to be shaken up, yes, right? That was absolutely. a moment where DC did need to be shaken up and it was shaken up. And you can't deny the fact that like everybody talked about it and it is a moment in time, right? Yeah. Like, you know, comics always have these moments in time where it's like nothing, you know, it's funny. There's that whole thing of like comics will never be the same, you know, DC will never be like, <laughs> You know, and I've done it too. I'm guilty of it too. But you're like, this character will be forever changed by this. And it's like those moments when you really take a step back and look at it, it's actually few and far between. There's not as many as you think. And like Spider-Man, we talked about this where it's like, there is a, there is a line on some of this stuff, right? Yep. And, and and New 2 is one of them. And and that's one of the things where it's like, no matter what anyone says, it is a a line. Like, it's interesting with, with, with New 52 because we were having this, this, um, we're having these meetings 
you know, a long time ago. We were talking about the timeline and all that stuff. And we had this big wall. We were talking about the different eras of, of DC. And it was like, yeah, there's just that era from, you know, post-crisis to New 52. That's an era. Right. Like it's just, there it is. You know, and that you have to recognize that it's like that says something. Yeah. That it's absolutely. like that line, you know, and then there's post that. And it's like, you know, it's uh yeah, it's interesting. But I think that's a moment where I didn't I never I don't, I'm trying to think of I've ever like flat out been like like I'm done. I'm, I have to get like, out of here. Done. Like they killed a character or there was a status quo change that was so drastic that I was just like usually if I've fallen off of stuff, it's it's more been um with apathy. Like I yeah, just, yeah, know, just, which is even and worse. That is worse. You have to be like, that's the yeah. thing. Like I, I do, I do believe, and I won't because you know, you, you're a professional. I'll just leave out the name, but I do, I do believe there are <laughs> some companies that like have a genuine approach where they're like, as long as they're upset, they'll keep reading. But like, well, that's a, that's a, as, as I've learned the hard lesson. Yeah. Is that that is real. I, I was talking about this with somebody else recently. We, we were talking about um, happy endings. And yes. I think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a theory about after working on Flash, why after working on Flash, but I was reading Flash the whole time. I, I have I have read Flash consistently. It's one of those books that I read the entire time. Like even because it's one of my favorite characters. So even when, when New 52 was happening, there were the changes, I was still reading it, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I wasn't, I wouldn't read it necessarily every month. It wasn't the top of my stack every month, but I was still consistently reading it and buying it. Like it was still a book I would read. Yeah. And there's a moment in time where the Wally West books were struggling, but before, before right. New 52, right? Right. They were really, they were really struggling. And this is my theory on this. I'm sure somebody's going to completely disagree with me on this. <laughs> I think the reason why it struggled was because Jeff gave Wally West a happy ending. Yeah. Because if you look at Flash 225 and you, it's him and Howard Porter and it is a happy ending. He defeated all his villains, all of them. Yep. Right, he defeated like the rogue. Like every villain in his book is in Rogue War. He defeats all those villains. He gets to team up with Barry. They stop, you know, uh, Reverse Flash. The kids are back. You know, everybody is happy, and he runs off in the sunset, and that is the end of Wally's story. Yeah, and I think that's why after that, no matter what they did, it really struggled for a long long time I mean, you're talking about you know jeff left flash this was crazy jeff left flash before infinite crisis huh so that means he left it because he was going to go work in Infinite crisis right so that means that between that and like when people talk about those books there's stuff in there people really like you know there's stuff that wade was doing that book continued after that it didn't completely end like there was other stuff there was a stuff with uh People get defensive about the Bart book, The Fastest Man Alive. You know, there were there was stuff in there. So it did it did end at two twenty five, and yeah. they picked it up at two twenty six. Like there was like there was stuff going on. I'm trying to remember the numbers correctly, but it's like yeah. there was stuff going on. It never really picked up again, and I think that's because he gave him a happy ending. And so it's hard. It's hard because there's a part of you as a writer where you want to end your story, yes. and you want to give your character a third act, and then there's a part of you also as like the audience you also sort of want that for your characters, you know? And that's one of the struggles of superhero books. It's part of why I think the books that people that are evergreens, that people really come back to all the time, it's because they have endings. Yeah. You know, there's an ending to that story. I mean, there, I think it's part of why All-Star Superman is is arguably the best. It's one of the best Superman stories of all time. This yep. is funny. So that's arguably one of the best Superman stories of all time. It has an ending. You know, whatever happened to the man tomorrow, that's an ending. Yeah, that's a big right. thing. That's a, that is the, the ending. ending. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. And I think, I mean, dude, you, if you were, uh, I reread that when I got the job, and it like hit me differently. You know, yeah. there was something more emotional to it. But that's the thing that it, it's a struggle when you're looking at these books, like giving them these uh, happy endings, and you know, it, it is interesting with, with, with that of like uh, moments people jump off, why they jump off, and I think it's part of why. You know, even the best TV shows have ended, movies have endings, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. I think the fact that sometimes we deny ourselves endings is part of, I think, the challenge of things, yeah. you know, and why people people jump off at certain times, you know, because you're well, not you see, that. Yeah, and you see the, the proliferation of, like, you know, part of the conversation, the ongoing conversation about, like, but superhero monthly big two comic books and how... uh 
manga is eating their lunch. And I'm like, yeah. for one thing, apples to oranges. But for the other, I think part of the appeal of like the manga format is that cosmetically it ends unless you're talking about something that runs for like a thousand chapters you know i agree with you i think there's a twist to that as well it's actually funny there's the ending but there's a clear beginning right yeah you can jump on no problem yeah yeah you can jump uh, on no problem and it's like i mean i i think the debate uh and i don't have this there's no solutions to this there isn't it's funny like when you get into comics you kind of dive into comics as like I don't know. It's weird. Like you're never really just buying a book, especially when you're buying big two. When you're yeah. going to big two, you're not buying a book. You're buying a universe. This is something we, we, we've right. talked about this where it's like yeah. DC fans and Marvel fans or big two fans. Like they're not just buying one comic. Like it's pretty rare. There's somebody that only buys Batman. There's, there's only one exception to that. I think and it's X-Men, but even then you're buying a universe, but you're buying a universe. You're buying multiple books. It's like, when you're not reading Wolverine. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are people that are exceptions to the world. I mean, this sure. is, that's that's life. But it's like, when people come in, they don't buy one book. They buy a universe. And I think if you lose sight of that. But the, but part of the problem is, and this is what, with, with my experience at DC, it's why I've always been very, like, adamant about trying to sell the universe and connect and, and, and make it so things connect and reflect each other. You know, like, when I was on Flash, I always made sure that whatever was happening, I tried to reflect. And it, it's harder now than it was. But it's like, I, I at least make an attempt. I mean, I was yeah. a big part of our crisis with pulling together all these story threads and acknowledging all of them yeah and being like all of this did matter like n- the books you read across the universe they all mattered yeah. uh which i think i think is important for people but you know having be clear beginnings because and i've heard this argument before of like i walk into a comic book store and if i just want to start reading whatever book where do I even begin? It can yeah. be, it can be difficult. Like in terms of superhero stuff, I think you're, yeah. you're supposed to ease them in, but that's where I think the power of like ultimate Spider-Man was because 100%. it was like, and, and actually that book has an ending. Like, I mean, it does like, it's like, you know, Peter dies and it's like, that is a, you know, spoilers. People have read also Spider-Man, but it's like, <laughs> there is an arc to that book and it's beautiful. Like yeah. and it is. And, and with that creative team, right you know? And it's like, yeah, there's different artists in there because of the when they relaunch as Ultimate Comics, Ult- mm-hmm. Ultimate Comics Spider Man, I think. Ultimate Comics Spider Man. But even before that, uh, yeah. Bag- once it was, uh, I think the idea was that once uh, Bendis and Bagley beat the record, Bagley yeah, jumped Kirby off. And yeah. yeah, and then uh, and then uh, Eminem jumped on, and then uh, when Bendis wanted to like tell the last Peter story, he was like, "All right, Bagley, you're back in." <laughs> yeah, it, it had to be Bagley. It had to be Bagley, which brings you back around the New Warriors. Like with New Warriors, it is funny how it's like reading that book. It's just it is so very much in that Spider Man realm, you know, like reading it. But it is having a book with five characters who are like essentially lost characters. They are. They are complete. They're discarded. discarded. <laughs> These are yeah, are- discarded. It always feels rough. It's rough. <laughs> I know, but they are because like no, like Night Thrasher. You know, you're talking about Firestar, yeah. a character who was invented in a friggin' cartoon show ten years prior. Yeah, yeah, I love Firestar yeah. though. So I, I like Firestar too. I remember, I remember being like really excited in Maximum Carnage when they were like Johnny Storm's in another dimension or some crap. But here comes Firestar, and I'm like, <gasps> good, good choice. I mean, Maximum Carnage, I still feel like is one of the better uh, events of our lives. Yeah, I, I, I hate it, it and I love it because it's you're absolutely right. Why do you hate it? I, I now, hate it because it's about this, dude. you you. Well, I don't want to say I hate Maxim Carnage, okay? Because when I was a kid, there were a couple things as a kid that I was like, immediately I was turned off. Like when it started well, with you and I would, have, if, if you and I went to the same comic store, we would have fought oh every God. fucking Wednesday. Absolutely, I've been like another <laughs> issue where Venom is chained up to the Statue of Liberty. Uh, but and I've been like hyped every Wednesday. I've been like Maximum Carnage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was reading it, and I bought the video game like in it, and I hated that too because I, I couldn't get past a certain point. But um, yeah. let me tell you, you the game genie, my friend. Yeah, my parents were not gonna buy me that. Like that was one of those <laughs> things where my my parents were like really upset that I needed to have a video game machine at all. Like they they thought like Dude. you know we're gonna get a computer, and it's like. The, one of the unintended consequences of it is that video games can be played on it. That was their whole thought. So I, like, I know how much you love video games. And yeah. so I'm like, oh, we, we have found your uh, rosebud. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my parents yeah. hated it. So now I have it. Now <laughs> I have it. Yeah, that's now. right. I mean, 
No, yeah. I, I I played a ton of uh yeah I I had a Genesis whereas everybody had the Super Nintendo because my parents were like a Super Nintendo you have a Nintendo and I'm like you have to learn that this is like a new technology there's there's more bits than before Dude, as a parent as a parent I am you totally get so it. paranoid about that mm -hmm. like if my kids tell me they want something I am very like okay, if we're getting you this for Christmas, I am getting you the thing you want, right? If we're going to do it, we do it. Yeah. I remember, um, this is like, <laughs> this is like 20 years ago, I think. It may, may a long time ago. I, I was with somebody else and we went to, we went to uh, like their family's Christmas and there was like, she, she had like a niece or a niece and the niece like opened this package up and she thought she was going to get an, um, and I think it was an iPod, just straight up an iPod. Okay. But it wasn't an iPod. It was like one of the other things. Oh, no, like a Zune. Or it was a, a, uh... I think it was like a Zune. I, what was that one called? It was, it was, it was 100% one of the other things, but then somebody else there got the that. iPod? Oh, my yes. God. So she was like, I could see the look of like just sadness and just <laughs> watching it unfold, the small child just being like, this is not what I wanted. Yeah. You know, it's like whatever my, my, I, you know, my grandma uh, is awesome, but she would try to buy me comics every year. And it was always like stuff I was never interested in, or I yep. wasn't like into. So this is actually funny. Cause you know, I talk about blind spots a lot. And like, yeah. I told you one of my blind spots was a Valiant in the nineties. And like, I got stuff that when it was like a claim Valiant, like I, I did buy some of those. Oh. Yeah, I was also working at a comic book store by then, so it was like I was reading everything by that point. Yeah. Um, but when it was um, the only time I ever got Valiant comics was when my grandma would get them for me, <laughs> and I'd be like, I have no idea what this is. Okay, yeah. all right, I guess you know. Oh but, yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, I I try to be very mindful of that with my kids of like making sure that if they ask for something, that is the thing that I get them. Yeah. Like, oh, I what, know. Oh, just just uh, to the point of Valiant, really quick. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know that you and I both have elected to buy at least one Valiant comic in our lives, and I know you have it in your collection. There's no way you don't, and that is, of course, the Im the Valiant Image crossover, uh, Deathmate. Never read it. You never read Deathmate colors? Never read like Deathmate. <laughs> no, dude, that was a weird one because <sighs> here's what I remember about that, and this is not a knock on anyone who worked on it course not because they still work in comics today which is like yes yes stuff. um all i remember about that book was that there were scheduling issues and there was oh. like, there was some kind of thing and, and so i remember um i trying to remember if that was that came out before i started working at the comic book store and mm. so you know i knew what image was but again that was like a blind spot and so that thing it was just a weird thing so it's funny i've actually thought about that book a lot i came this close during the pandemic when all of us were buying shit we did not need during the pandemic that was a thing i almost bought and i didn't i almost bought like just all of it because i was yeah. like i'm gonna read it i'm gonna read it i'm gonna buy all the issues i thought the covers looked cool they, they do I, look cool and i was a gimmick kid you know we talked about before like if there was a gimmick on a cover i was buying it well like, and do you remember the gimmick is that you can read them out of sequence because the number designation was colors so it was deathmate black deathmate yellow deathmate okay. blue i think like it was so Technically, you could read them out of sequence, but of course you couldn't because it was already incomprehensible. You're watching image characters, Wildstorm characters, and Valiant characters all cross over part of some universe where, like, Void met the Solar Man of the Atom, and they yeah, like, yeah. bang. It's just like I know that I know because there's that cover of them like, of them like going like. Yeah, I, the only I, reason I why I have it, yeah. The only yeah. reason why I have it, yeah. The only reason why I have it though is because technically that is the first appearance of the Max. Oh, that's right, because you're a big Max guy. Yeah. I was a Max guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah. I got to read the yeah. Max. Yeah. And I sure enough. I, I'm trying to think if I have anything like that that I was like, I guess I'm getting this because of this. I did. So as, as you know, my love of Bloodlines. Uh, and I got all of Bloodlines. But I, I remember reading the Hitman one and being like, this is this is dope. That's, that's the and, winner. <laughs> yo, clear winner. Like, yeah. one of the best comics in the 90s by far. Like, yeah. by far. And uh, I feel like it is... I would argue it is a perfect comic book. Mm. Like, I think it is, it's up there for me personally. I think it's wow. up there. I mean, you and I were texting about, you know, I have, th I think I have like three, if not four pages from it. Oh. Because I really love, uh, That's right. that, I love that book. Um, and I remember, and it was weird too. There was a moment where it was like, it is funny how 
I think some parts of comics are so uniform now, but it's like there was a moment in time where some comics were a dollar, some were a dollar twenty five, some were a dollar fifty, and there was like reasons for it. And sometimes there'd be different paper stocks. Yeah. And I remember Hitman number one buying it. I remember buying number one very clearly getting it and yeah. being like, This is amazing. Like this is you know, and I was a teenager, so I'm just like, Hell yeah, this is a great comic book. But I remember walking in, and this is that time where I didn't know what was coming out all the time. Like we didn't have, yeah. you know, you didn't have. I didn't have the internet, so I didn't have. I didn't know. But I remember walking into the comic book store, seeing that covered Hitman number two, and it's the Joker with the knife in the face. Yeah. And I, I can have, I can visually see myself walking in and being like, "Oh my god!" Like <laughs> taking off the rack. Like one of the more exciting moments of just like this comic rules. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel like that book is. Uh, have you read it? Have you never read Hitman? Are you like? Is that I have. I, I. I mean, I. I. I've read Hitman, but only when he like appeared and stuff. You know, like. Oh, dude, you gotta read it. Yeah, there's. I, isn't there like a JLA Hitman book, or is that? Just yeah, you know that that takes heat. place. That no, so there's there's a there uh in in JLA there was in JLA there was a scene where Hitman does go oh to yeah power and you know well, he he auditions uh, right and he looks he at Wonder Woman with the X-ray vision and that's then, all he leaves. came for was that yeah so there's like that yep. joke um, well he also makes a great joke because I think he teams up with Kyle and also Superman and so he does at different Superman times Superman is like Hitman book yeah so well, Superman's like team. Tommy's a good guy. <laughs> I was well, like, he what? Team, he doesn't team with Hitman. What happens is, is that he is flying and he sees Hitman on the on a roof and he sits down and talks to him. And it's one of the best Superman issues ever. It's like this emotional thing about how Superman can't save everyone. And it was just, yep. it's really good. It's really powerful. And then uh, it has an amazing ending. You should yeah. read it. Kevin. No, I, I, I've read it. I've read that. Oh, issue. so you know what happens. Happy. The ending is oh, I know what happens. Hitman hey, kills somebody. <laughs> Yeah, and, super, and and you're like that is just Garth Ennis like just basically self inserting and being like I this is Garth Ennis talking to Superman, and yeah. uh, and him being like Superman is the coolest superhero in the universe, and also superheroes are stupid and I hate them, um, in the same no. breath. Like, <laughs> but that's always the best superhero stuff. I feel like sometimes is when you I don't we talk a lot like I think the better superhero books are the ones where you don't aren't as precious about it. Yes. Um I, I would say one of the few writers I think that is incredibly precious about superheroes, but is one of the best at it is Mark Wade. One hundred percent. Um yeah, like I think he's definitely precious about it, but he sees them in a way that I think few few do, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, but he still can put them through some like really, really uh, uh emotional storytelling. But yeah, I, I put Hitman on I I probably hit him on a pedestal. One time, uh, Pete Tomasi and Mike, because Pete Tomasi was the assistant editor on him. Right. Yeah. And we were in a we were in a van at a convention, you know, going from the hotel to the convention center. And I was like, as you and I have discussed, I don't know, I will tell someone. Right. I'll be like, this book was dope. And I was just like, yo, man, Hitman was dope. And we talked about how it was a perfect book because it had a great it's a book that arguably probably could have gone for forever yeah. because it had a perfect story engine. It right. was just like like Tommy gets a job and goes on the job, you know? That's it. Yeah. That's, it. Yeah. That's all he needed. Here's and my question were... to you about that. Yes. Okay. Fair. Could they bring it back? Okay. Like, could well, Ennis I... do Hitman again? He's the only one. Okay. It would have to be him and him and McCree. They'd have to do it. I, 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 I have, I have considered at times having, bringing like, him back MCO or something. I'm always trying to seek stuff in, you know, this it's like, of course, you know, uh, like try to put Noonan's into something. I, anytime I see anyone Noonan's, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm here, you know. But uh, yeah. do I think they could bring it back? <sighs> They've done stuff with it. I, I, it. It's definitely on like a list. If I was going to make a list of like, you know, I, I think I've talked about this before. If I was going to make a list of like what my ideal DC Comics is and if I was going to, um, you know, make a list of like what books I would do. If yeah. I could, if I could, like Blue Sky, like here is what I want DC Comics to look like, and this is what I want from DC Books. This is what I think would be like the best monthly publishing schedule. Hitman would definitely be on the list. I would, I would try, I would try, but I don't know, I don't know if he'd want to do that. You know? Oh, I, I don't know because he did that Reptilian book, which like, yeah, but I mean, he, he, I don't know him at all. You know? I've no, told... you have no, you have no rapport. No, we have we talked about this. I told you, like, I have, I have only embarrassed myself in front of him that is, <laughs> yeah, i have never funny. i have never had like a it, it's hard with when you when you 
Yeah, I, I just don't have that with him at all. Like, we, we've mm-hmm. spoken maybe twice. And the second time, it was just me being like, Preacher is one of the greatest comics of all time. Hitman is amazing. Yeah, and he's like, right. And, no, and then Frank Thierry there being like, what are you doing? You're embarrassing me. Because Thierry, <laughs> the second time, yes, so the first that. time I was in a circle of people outside of a hotel, like, late at night talking. So it's all of us together talking, you know? Yeah. That, that was the first time I met him. And I didn't want to, like, totally mark out and just be like, you know. And I, well, actually, no, no, this isn't true. I met him when I was, a, this is, I met him when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I have, like, Preacher and Hitman and other books that he's done. I had Darkness Number 1 signed by him. <laughs> I had, you know, I had, um, I met him as a kid. Right. Uh, but as an adult who who writes comic books. So even when I met him in that circle, it was, like, that was so long ago. Like, yeah. it wasn't even, I don't, like, Nailbiter wasn't even out. You know, like, we're talking about a long time ago. Yeah. And so the last time I saw him was 2019. And we were at a bar and I knew who he was. He's like right there. And then Frank Terry, let me introduce you. He introduced us. And I had had maybe like a, a few drinks. So uh-huh. I was just like, it was easier. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry was like, oh God, what are you doing to me right now? Why did yeah. you do this? Um, it, it's hard because when you meet some of these people, you wish you could. I think right. that's what happens. And then later you're like, you know what? I had that moment. I should have said something. And then, but it, it, it's tough. I've been really lucky that like, you know, Mark Wade and I, uh, who is somebody I, I really like as a, as a writer for so long. Like yeah. the fact that I can just text him and talk to him about comic book stuff. And just, that's like getting about... something signed. It's like, it, it, but it's better because it's like now you're colleagues. Yeah. We had a call last week. We had a call last week about DC stuff. And we spent probably like 15 minutes of the beginning of the call talking about his Captain America run. The first one with Ron Garner. Oh, what a good and run. So, dude, so good. I got the omnibus uh, on free comic book day and we were just like talking about it. And I was just, you know, that book is funny because, you know, that was a book that was kind of built to end because it was like, we're giving you this to you. Knowing yep. it's going to, knowing end. it's going to get canceled, but then it started to tick up and they were yeah. like, Oh, but you're still, we still, but we gave, we've already spent millions of dollars on this deal. Yeah, We're doing the heroes reborn stuff, but then he came up back at the ending and not only did they give him one book, they gave him two. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a powerful, like that. That's a move. Uh, but I was talking to him about Captain America stuff. Like that's, that's cool. You know, uh, every once in a while, I think I told you this during the pandemic, um, Bendis and I were texting one night and then I started asking him secret invasion questions. <laughs> Just nerdy secret invasion. Can we talk questions. about that? The fact that, like, I think I I, I want to say we talked about this, where, like, in his Avengers, pre-New Avengers book, mm-hmm. when Vision smashes the Quinjet, or when, I think it's actually when Jack of Hearts explodes, outside yeah, of Avengers explodes. Mansion. <laughs> like, there's, there's a double-page splash of Avengers Mansion exploding. I don't remember if it's when Vision drives the Quinjet into the mansion, or when Jack of Hearts explodes, because that mansion blows up twice in one book. In, in the double-page splash... There is a scroll in the foreground. What? Yeah. In the foreground, there's a silhouette of bushes, but there is a straight up scroll in the foreground in the first Avengers book that he worked on before. When we talk about subplots and stuff. Like Brian is really good at that. And I, I yes. think I I mean, I think Brian's biggest I don't know, I guess Brian's biggest contribution to the Marvel Universe is Miles Morales, but in terms of like this is going to be a thing and it'll last for a while, but dude, his Avengers. I remember Avengers was like, I would I, w- I would read Avengers. I was reading it was coming out, yep. and and then when Brian was coming onto it, it was like we were talking about we were talking about those lines, mm-hmm. right? Avengers Assembled is a line. Like there is Avengers before and there was Avengers after. That's and right. Avengers Assembled. I I, I think I told you story before, but I was the manager of a comic book store, and it was the very first time. Dude, this is so long ago. It was the very first time that when I was the manager of a store, we started using the FOC. Oh. Like, FOC was, like, brand new. Like, Marvel was the only one doing it. And, mm-hmm. you know, we got an email, and they were like, here's Avengers 500. Yeah. Here it is. Read it. And I printed it out. <laughs> <laughs> I printed the PDF. This tells you a lot about who I am as a person. I printed yep. the PDF, stapled it, and I sat there 
late at night by myself and I read it and I was fl- like floored. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, we, I have to order way more of this. This is like, right. Like, holy crap. And then it was like the excitement for those books and you had that. And then you would read, you know, like new Avengers number one. And it's just like, and here's electro and I've always loved electro. So I'm like, I'm here. That was a moment for me. I'm already like, I was already in. And then it re- they reveal it's yeah. electro. I'm like, that's so cool. Like this is cool. It, Dude, it was, it was so like cool. Want from Marvel because it was like it felt like we were talking about when people come and they buy a universe, and that was the book for yes. the universe. And that is, you know, it, it's interesting how there were. This is one thing that Marvel has it. I, I think DC struggles with where it's like Marvel has more houses than DC yes. does, and part of it's because the Justice League is like the house. Well, you know what's frustrating but, is like, you're right, but DC's yeah. houses are less accessible. I think that's the problem. Like DC has tons of houses. They got like they got the mat, you know. They got the the magic corner, which is ill defined. You know, they've but got that's like not the, that house. I mean, that's why it's. But it's it could be because... like it. It could be DC has like uh when you know that that uh, that like CG thing they have opening all their movies now, where like it's just a bunch of characters with no faces, and uh, you see how many like there's just it's this rich universe of characters that all came from different realities originally. Because there is no like prime DC universe. No, well, I mean, yes, but <laughs> and then, but, but like you could unify them in some way where like it could. The problem is what we're talking about, and what I think is enraging a few eagle-eared viewers is I'm I'm suggesting that DC should be more like the Marvel universe. It, it's so funny. This is one of DC's. I I I I struggle with this because I feel like DC should be DC, and the mistake is every time they try to make it Marvel. However, they don't try to make it DC either, and I think that's true. This gets difficult sometimes, and it's like this is something I you know I I believe in. There are houses like with Superman. There is the Superman books. There is the Batman. Yep. You know there are Green Lantern books. I always feel like the better versions of DC is when that exists, where it's like here are the Teen Titans books. Yes, it, but what Marvel has is. You know, what Marvel has is these very distinct different houses, right? Where it is very much more distinct. There's the Avengers house, the X-Men house, which is its own juggernaut, you know. Which is an with, island, yeah. With, uh, the Fantastic with Four, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Four. When I was um, a few days ago, you know, uh, so Duke, number one, and Cobra Commander, number one, sold really, really well, right? Like, it has been really exciting. Thank you. Like, it's been very, it's very exciting. It's like a happy moment. We're like cool people are digging what we're doing right we're really happy um and so i was like oh i wonder what the devils do chi joe number one sold and i actually couldn't find the number i I know it's out there if i really wanted to ask questions but i was curious if it was just like publicly available yeah so i went back and i looked at 2001 and i was looking at sales for 2001 like the top 100 of the year brother it was like x-men yeah it was like x-men ultimate spider-man um green arrow because the Kevin Smith was in there, right? You know, and there was obviously you get your you get your Batman's and stuff like that, but it was yeah. like, oh, crap. It was X Men, like yeah. it. It was just like, oh my god! You talk about the juggernaut that is X Men. It was like, I think people don't understand how much that is. It's that that is its own, its thing. own thing. It is yeah. very much. But you know, it was funny. Like and like, listen, I'm a, obviously I'm a DC person. You know, I've been I've been reading DC comics, um, you know, my entire life, and I feel like it is very much a, a part of who i am and you know it's like family where you're like i love this family but i know there are some problems i yeah. you know it's like <laughs> yeah 100 but dude we went to disneyland we went to disneyland uh yes. a few weeks ago right and it was like an adventure so it was like me and my family we go to we go to uh we go to disneyland and it was a adventure it was also rough at times i feel like it was like a test of my soul for five days because Mm -hmm. i'm so used to going to disneyland with like myself my friends my wife you know and it's different to go with kids i've only been one time with with, uh my daughter when she was younger and then so we went with both my kids and that's when you really become very aware of oh this isn't about me anymore it's about them you know Mm -hmm. i became very aware very quickly and and i'm a very like rope drop till close person and that does not work with children you know so it was, like, <laughs> it was really interesting experience so our first day we were mostly in disneyland and, and every it was it was really fun i'm, I'm my, my kids like when i came back i was like broken when we got yeah. back because it was like we were there for five days and so when we got home i was just like a broken person <laughs> and my wife and i were like that was a whirlwind we don't even really feel like we went to disneyland but my kids were just like pumped 
Yeah. They were so happy. They were just like, everything was really cool. Everything was really exciting, you know, for them. Great. And it was really like a great experience for them. They got to go on all the rides they wanted to go on. Um, and it was, it was really interesting to be there. It was so packed. I have never seen it that packed. Like, it's funny huh. when I see people talk about like, is he struggling? And I'm like, what? Where? <laughs> Where? Where? There's so many people here. And I, we did like a, a VIP tour guide one day and they were talking about that. Like, we don't know what happened. It's so packed this week. Hmm. Like, we don't know. And I'm like, this was supposed to be a down week. We're here on a yeah. down. And this is insane. It was the busiest I've ever seen in the park. And it was just <laughs> bonkers, bonkers. And it was, and it was just, it was nuts. Um, but the reason why I started talking about this is because we went to Avengers Campus and I had never been before. The last time I had been to Disneyland, Avengers Campus was like a manhole cover. It was literally like they had a thing where it was like it glowed and they were like, this is the site of where Avengers Campus is going to be. And I remember standing oh, there cool. being like, oh, cool, they'll build this. And then obviously, you know, the pandemic and everything happened so that we did not do that. But so yeah. we went to Avengers Campus and holy crap, uh, the energy there was so powerful and my kids lost their minds. So we're in, <laughs> we did like the opposite of what most people do because I figured this out. It was actually kind of funny. Like we, we went into the park really early. We were doing like the rope drop thing. But we were also, we're staying at the hotel that's connected to California right. Adventure. So nice. you just like walk right in. But what's yeah. funny is that there's like, there's one line. Oh, there's a whole other, I gotta tell you this other thing. There's one line to get into California Adventure, right? Yeah, and that's the hotel line, which is shorter. It's easier, and then there's the public line, and that gets in at like eight, right? Okay. So it's it's there's a window where you can kind of go on a few things, plan stuff out. But I have my kids with me, so I'm like, okay, the very first thing we're gonna do is Little Mermaid, okay. and that's closest to us too, so it made sense for us to do Little Mermaid. Yeah, but after Little Mermaid, I want to go on um, Spider Man. Yes, I really wanted to go on the Spider Man ride. And uh, so we're in line to get into the park and the person standing in front of me in line is Nicholas Holt. What? Oh, and, okay. And, and I didn't say anything to him because he's with, he was with his family, like yeah. his wife, his kids. It was clearly either her parents or his parents, like the grandparents were there. Yeah. 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 It's a whole and thing. It, it's a whole thing. And I was thinking about it. it, it you can tell, like, I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to say anything. You're not gonna be like Lex Luthor himself. He wasn't, they hadn't announced it yet. No. <laughs> my, my, and my, my wife was there and she's like, I think that's that actor. I'm like, oh, it is that actor, honey. Like, no, it's, it's Beast. There's yeah. no, no question. Which also, he's way taller than I thought he was. Really? Because like, he doesn't I, strike me as tall. That's interesting. No, tall person. Like, at least, like, on me. That's cool. You know, he, he's a tall dude. That's great. So I was like, oh man, that's a tall man. Um, and so I saw him in line and I was like, that's clearly him. Um, and, but it was just kind of funny because it's like, yeah, then we get home and it was like, oh, he's announced as Lex Luthor. And I'm like, fuck, I wish I had said something. Or I wish I'd been like a moment in there where I've been like, hey. But even then his kids were there. So they're like, nah. I'm not doing no, it. He, uh, he appreciates it even though he didn't know it happened. <laughs> no, no. So then uh, we go into the park. We go on The Little Mermaid, which no, nobody is going to Little Mermaid first. Because you're going to Cars, Midway Mania, Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever, right? And yeah. we had done, we did the uh, fast pass or whatever the the genie plus for Spider Man. So I we knew we were gonna go on it at like a certain time, and we weren't gonna go on it until like eight twenty or whatever, right? Yeah. So we go on Little Mermaid. We do a little looking at stuff, you know, treating our kids a thing, looking at things. But then we had to walk. The the mob of people entering the park were going the opposite direction as us. Excellent, nice. So I'm okay. walking with two small children, not with a stroller, which was a whole mistake on my part because I was a foolish <laughs> person. And my wife, who hasn't had coffee yet, and it's like eight in the morning, and we're going through this crowd to get the Spider Man rag. But then when we got to the, uh, when we got over to Avengers Campus, you know, it was like it just opened and there was just this like really cool energy, the music, the vibe of it. And then we just like ran into Doctor Strange, just like turned a corner and there he was. And we just oh. ran him. And my kids were so excited to be Doctor Strange. We took pictures. They we were just like, and he was totally in character and that's my son, awesome. Like they 100% believed it. And then um, we went on the Spider Man ride. My son was not happy about the Spider Man ride until he was on it. It was so <laughs> funny because 
my kids are the age where it's like the magic is still real for them you know so it's like when we get in the ride there's a whole explanation at the beginning of like peter parker have you been on it you haven't been on it right no i've never been on it oh dude i'm not gonna spoil the whole thing for you but it was like peter parker basically explains to you what's gonna happen and you got you get the preamble of like why there's danger and all that and yeah my son was like i'm not going to help peter (laughs) like I will not help him. Like he's like, I do not, <laughs> we are not going to do that. Like he was just like, no, I'm not helping Peter. And I was yeah. like, no, we're gonna help him. We're gonna go on the ride. And he was like, no, I do not want to go on this ride. And I was like, I promise you, you will enjoy this. Yes. And uh, he was like, I don't want to help Peter. And I'm like, dude, it'll be okay. We get on the ride, and of course he has a blast. He loves it. And that ride was so much fun. Like, yeah. You know, you're like, like, it was a family experience. We're all laughing, all having a really good time. Get off That's the awesome. road and we're walking. And then there's a line to meet Spider Man. Oh, and sure. Everybody is just so pumped. And it just feels like the experience and the immersion of it, it just felt so real. Yeah. And my kids were like vibrating. <laughs> and my, my son at one point was like, I don't want to wait in line. I don't want to. He was like, Spider Man, I don't know. And then my wife took him over so she could, he could see Spider Man. Yeah, and then he was just like, "I I want to meet Spider Man." <laughs> so we got up, we took pictures with him and stuff, and it was just such an interesting like. It is. It's funny because I haven't been to anything like that in a in a long time for DC. Like I think when we were kids, I'd go to Six Flags and I would go on the Batman ride, and the moment yeah. into the Batcave on Six Flags, you're just like, it was so it was just so cool, and it's like I think that's something with. With comics, I wish we had more experiences like that, like more yeah. places, more stuff that you can walk into and and really just kind of like, I don't know, find yourself and, and give yourself up to the experience. Absolutely. No, yeah. like the closest thing is like Marvel superhero islands of adventure before that. And it's like, oh, for not... you. Yeah. Dude, when oh, I was a kid, stuff. they opened a Marvel restaurant at Universal Studios. Oh, that's cool. And I went to universal studios and what I, it wasn't inside the park. It was, I'm sure. I think it was like, it was, it was kind of both. If I remember Mm -hmm. correctly, but we went and we went there at like the moment the park opened and they did not serve like breakfast, I think. Um, so I have all of these pictures. It was dope dude. Cause I remember walking in and I took a lot of pictures, but they had all this stuff. They had like, the Infinity Gauntlet, they had, and this is, again, this is so long ago, this was like, it felt like a really big deal to walk in and be like, here's all this stuff. One of the cooler things they had was that, like, you go in the bathroom and there's the mirrors, but then it would look like the Hulk was going to come through the mirror. Like, it was, oh, cool. uh, Yeah, it was crazy. Like, the bathrooms were all themed where it looked like you were in, like, you know, a radiation thing or whatever. It was like, (laughs) but I'm like this kid, I say kid, but I was probably in my later teens, uh, when this, when I finally got to go, and that was the most exciting thing for me was to yeah. go into that. You know, like I mean, do you yeah. remember when uh, I was thinking about this recently? And this might be a spoiler for something down the line, but I was I was thinking about Guy Gardner's um, Warriors Bar. Yes, and that issue is so good, and it's just everyone hanging out at a bar, and the Lobo shows up, <laughs> like yeah. Dark Side's mm-hmm. watching it, the whole thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's all uh, uh, Phil Kimana is drawing it, and it just looks just as so a issue but it's like i wish that that existed same with planet krypton yeah like i wish the planet krypton had been real like you you see yeah. that stuff in kingdom come and you're like i i want that oh Where no that? when i remember reading it for the first time being like they could do this they, like, could, they, do they could just do this yeah. i don't understand <laughs> yeah yeah but then you, then you find out that like uh planet hollywood went bankrupt <laughs> right like, it was maybe they can't do this like and that was every movie and it was like oh yeah okay no, maybe, maybe, maybe they can't do it but yeah going to disney was uh I don't, it was interesting with my family uh, again. Like it was a totally different experience than when yeah. going an adult by yourself with your buddies and you can take your time on stuff. And but then when you have kids and they're like, they have very much what they want to do, and it's mm-hmm. uh, which of course you want it. That's what you're there for. But it was exactly. the first real. It, it's that thing of like I always joke about. This is an awful example I'm about to tell you, <laughs> but it, it's like reading a book about mowing the lawn and then actually mowing the lawn. It's like you have to you understand it. Yeah, I get it, but also it's it's pain. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Well, driving a car, I guess, would be the same. You could you could read a book about driving a car, but we get into there and it's like, no, it's a completely different experience. It's, it's like that with with most um, most stuff. But we should talk about uh, 
comics we like right now. We said we were going to do a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. comics we yes, like. I, I mean, comics we like. You, you mentioned that, and then we're going to go through the comments because we had, we had told people. I got the Love Everlasting trade, the second one. I haven't read the second one yet, but I picked it up. Me either. This is, this is my Tom King plug of the day. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's and that's an easy that's an easy thing to do. I mean, um, yeah, Gotham City or one ended this year, which was mm-hmm, just mm-hmm, a fucking mm-hmm. good book. Uh, Human Target ended too. Um, Love Everlasting's good. Um, I uh, it's funny. My wife is such a like good barometer for what's like gonna work and what's gonna hit and what's great, and so mm. like. She uh she read and I know it's it's just ending actually this year but or actually next month or this month, uh, Moon Knight, Jed McKay's Moon Knight. You but know, I getting to end. First, yeah, dude, I read the first issue of it um earlier this year because you know you hear about these books right and right. I, I read it and I was really happy with that first issue. I, I remember being yeah. like, oh, and it was one of those books where it was it had clear. I I was look for like thoughtfulness and intent. Yes, and it's like you could see what they're trying to do and you you're like you want to see where they go with it and that was right. one of those ones. So I'll probably end up checking that out and do like a, a good a good uh like binge read on it now that it's uh, it's ending um but yeah people people really like that like uh like that one a lot yeah oh you know what's a great series uh I believe it debuted this year um it's this great uh it's been a long time coming Superman from uh, Jamal Campbell and uh, and company <laughs> and that me. was a really good one <laughs> Thank you. Great I'm book. Glad, I, would tell you, I live in a bubble. Like I mean, you and I, we were talking about this before we started, but it's yeah. like, you know, whenever there's drama and comic books that happen, I don't find out about it from someone has to tell you. <laughs> somebody will text me a screen grab and I'm like, what's happening? Um, yeah. I, I feel like I'm old. Sometimes I feel like I'm becoming old man comics, not in the get off my lawn, but in that way that I'm like, who's that? <laughs> what's, what's that? Who's yeah. over there? I, I think there's a lot with like, uh, like you know, like Brian K. Vaughn and some of these creators that are not. It's interesting. There's the comic industry. There's the comics community, and then there's this other thing where it's like these creators that are like huge names, yep. but they're just you know uh, not around as much. You know, yes, they're 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 off the they're they're out of they're unplugged. They're unplugged. And, uh... and I think about this a lot, but I've become that kind of creator in a lot of ways where I'm like I just stop paying attention. So, with that being said. Whenever people tell me they, they like what I'm doing, I'm always really appreciative of it because I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what anybody <laughs> likes anymore. Yeah, I don't know if everybody hates it. Like it's but not this is like, why uh... I asked you before we started. I was like, we should talk about comics you like because what do people like right now? <laughs> what yeah, is the, exactly. What, what is the thing is, people like? it's impossible to tell. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't see anyone talking about a lot of it, but I also don't like I. People are upset, but they can't cite their sources. And, oh, well, that's a whole other... Right, but, like, so that's... You know, people are mad, but they can't say, like, what sucks. Meanwhile, like, there are great books... Like, every year, there are these books you didn't see coming that are just like, holy yeah. crap, these are great. Well, um, look at, like, Jeremy Adams on Green Lantern. Like, that book is just real good. Just yeah. real good. I look at books like... Uh, anything that Zoe Thurgood does, I'll buy. Oh, sure. You know? Yeah. Oh, well, today, I'm going to go to the comic book store today to pick up the new Ebru Baker book. And Sean Phillips. Right. Yes. Like that comes out today, and I'm like, that that's gonna get my butt in that store. Uh, that's somebody who right? does not, he is not plugged in. Like Brubaker is not part of the conversation. Like Brubaker just makes his uh, stuff. Just... Uh, I don't know. I mean, you never know. I mean, it, it is funny, you never know who is paying attention. Uh, I really like obviously Daniel Warren Johnson's Transformers. I feel oh, like yes. I will be too silly if I don't uh, bring that up. I like what I, I liked the first two issues of Kelly Thompson's The Cull. Um you know, that was great. That? I have not, but I have been reading her Birds of Prey. Yeah, and that book's great, great too. Um, what else? I'm looking at a list of books right now to be. You like, know, it's a great book uh, that it just launched, and I know, like Batman Offworld. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just... Batman in space. I know, I know, but it's it's everything that I would complain about, but I love it. It's very much like the Sal's a hypocrite book because I'm like, it feels. It, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I literally, there's an episode of our show where I said, you can't do a book where Batman would just go into space. That's boring. And then they launched Batman yeah. off world the next week. Yeah. And I'm like, it's... yeah, but this is actually really kind of fun. Be- and it's, and it's fun. And here's why, because there's a moment in it. And it's the moment that like, for me, locks the book into place. And it's 
Batman's in space. He's, uh, you know, getting the, the shit kicked out of him. He's clearly there for a reason. He meets up with a Tamaranian. I'm talking to the audience, you know. But uh, yeah. he's talking to a Tamaranian freedom fighter, and she's like, uh, she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm here on, you know, she clearly, you're here on, you're here deliberately. Um, what's her name? And he's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, the name of the woman that, that, that you're here for, you know, the reason you're here. And then you turn the page and it says Gotham. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh it's my good. god. Um, oh my god, he's here because he got his butt kicked by an alien. Oh, that's so stupid, and I love it. <laughs> that is such a Batman thing to do. It's so funny. Uh, um, two books that I liked. Um, I liked I'm always angry at James. Yes. James, you know, who's like one of my like closest friends. Um, you know, it's uh, and he always puts out books that I really like. I look forward yeah. to, and like I really like the Deviant. And it's funny with the Deviant because He's again, right. it's one of the books that I have watched be made. made. You know, yeah. and it's like it, it's you know I read the script. It's like I read the yeah. script. I see some of the art. I read like a version of it, and then he sent me the the one that was you know the one. I, I think it was, I think it was before it got announced, or it was right after it got announced. He sent me the issue one PDF. And I just texted him on Saturday, and I was just like, man, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, it's so good. It's only a book only he could write. And yeah. I, but, you know, it, it's so good. There was a book an Image put out called Crave. Yeah. Uh, it just started, but I actually binge re- read it, and, like, all in one sitting. They they sent us a PDF of it, and I read all of it in one sitting, and I, I enjoyed it. Like, I was... I was glad I read it like that. Like, I'm glad I just powered through all of it in one sitting. Uh, I thought that was, that was really good. That's what uh, I'm doing with, uh, with Danger Street. I'm not, I read the first issue and I went, this is going to be like Rorschach. I'm going to have to wait until it's Yeah, I on. stopped. I stopped on Danger Street um, probably around like three or four. And again, like, yeah. I, you know, I talk to Tom every week, but it was like course, definitely yeah. where I was like, I was enjoying it, but I just know some of the books, some of Tom's books are. I don't know. They, they work. They work in that setting a little bit more. Yeah. Um, Have you read Hexagon Bridge? Because I know that's a, 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 apparently an incredibly like good book as well. No, I haven't. I've I've seen it like advertised, and I've had people recommend it. I haven't picked it up yet. Maybe I'll try to grab that one today when I when I swing by the store. Uh, It'll probably still be there. <laughs> or right, I'm gonna I'm gonna burn through some comments here since we only have. Spoiler for everybody, you only have like 15 more minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh, and really comments. quick, Predator versus Wolverine. Yay. Oh, dude, let's talk about Predator for a moment here. <laughs> you have to tell me this. I, I've seen this. So did Tom, Tom did not like your Predator Pirates idea? He hates it. He doesn't like, he, well, he doesn't hate it. He he treated, you know what? It's funny. I think Tom would actually, like, he, he had, he, he unleashed his inner editor. Where I was like predator, like I was because I'm I talk about how like a predator, the predator movie works best where you have a script for something else, and then in act two the predator shows up. Like that's it. It's just like any movie. I, but I agree. I agree. That's the movie, right? It's I, like yeah. predator the movie works great if there's no predator in it because it's just an Arnold movie. Here's a bunch of big burly dudes who go into the jungle to get the because the Russians are selling weapons to these. South Americans to bring weapons over the border to America. That's a that's a plot. That's an eighties movie. But yeah, then yeah. Act Two, Predator shows up, kills everybody. That's a movie. Predator Two, same exact plot, right? It's like there is a gang war in the hottest day or the hottest summer in Los Angeles's yeah. history, and it is messed up. And this dude who is couldn't be less like Arnold Schwarzenegger if you tried is trying to keep the to keep everything together. Yeah. And then the Predator shows up, like that's the movie. And I'm like, you could do that with like You've Got Mail. You could do that with anything. And I'm like, but you could do that. <laughs> With like, I'm like predator on a pirate ship. Like you got these pirates and they're on a ship and then a predator like drops down on the ship and like you, he's, he's making his way through the ship and like that, that. And he's like, you can't put predator on a pirate ship. And Tom was like, he was vehemently like, no, you can't put him on a pirate ship. He would just kill everyone on the ship. And I'm like, it's not about predator doing gruesome kills. It's not Freddy Krueger. It's about the adventure. It's, it's a microcosm. Like it's not necessarily like the, the, you know, you could tell like the, the 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 two or three hours that it would take for a predator to kill everyone on the pirate ship in ninety minutes, or in a couple it, of issues. Yeah, like, I mean this is a, this is a workshopping problem. Like this exactly. is a, the thing where it's like you get in a room and you go, okay, what happens next? You, it's it. This is where I think the best kind of like writers' rooms and Tom and I were talking. About, we were we were at a meeting recently and we were we were we were at a story meeting together recently and we were talking a little bit about this where it's like when you're starting off on a project and you're doing this, like just, just jamming ideas. Yeah. You have to create like improv and you just say yes to everything and you see exactly. where it takes you. Um, 
Tom is funny because Tom is always like a little quieter in meetings. This is what Tom's game is. I know this for a while. Tom is a little quieter in the meeting. Mm-hmm. And then he will tell you after the meeting is over what he really thinks. But he, and or or he just like waits until things are kind of moving along and then he starts inserting you know his ideas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But he's not the no person. Tom Arcon, he's definitely not the no person. I've been in the room with the no people and that's always rough. When you have the, oh, that, sure. the person in the room that just like wants to say no to everything, that's always yeah. hard. Especially when you're in the it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Like you're just you're just throwing ideas around. You're just it, talking. It counts. Exactly. Right? Nobody ca- yeah. Who cares? I think the way you would do that is is that you're you're right. It's a pirate thing. It's just a pirate movie. You insert predator in it, but it's like you don't have to even stay on the boat. The boat can sink and crash, and then it's like that's the thing. Oh, like on a beach, and then you're the you're the character thing, and they survive. They're on the beach, and they're like, "I burned the ship down. We did it." Yes. And yes. You see out in the water, you fucking see it coming in yeah. the water. And it's like glitching out, like you can, and now, oh, yeah. now it's like, oh shit! Now I gotta run in this in the, this fucking uh, desert island, island, like whatever, whatever it is, that's, right? And dude, shaking, yes. Like, and that's your third act, you know, or that's your because what you would do is you would do you do okay. So first act, pirate yeah. story, right? Right, right. Somebody dies, we don't know why on the ship, yeah. something, right? And you do this thing where it's like this is the most badass pirate in all of pirates on the open sea, right? Yeah. He has reputation. And maybe he wants to retire. He wants to stop being a pirate. He's the Dread Pirate Roberts, and he wants to give it to somebody else, whatever, uh-huh. right? Then you get the fun and games. This is the second act, fun and games. Right, right. You have the person where it's like they're trying to go up against their so hit or misses. Maybe they encounter another ship at first, and then yes. the ship is like all dead decimated, dipped, right? And it's like, what happened here? Oh, it's a curse. Right, mermaids did this. Sirens did this. We got to get out of here. Maybe oh, Jones, little, whatever. Yeah, little did they know that predator got on their boat. You know, yes. You have, you have conflict on the on this about like, oh, there's a curse. Yep. And then you have there's an invisible mutiny. curse on this, right? Yeah. yeah, mutiny's going on. And right before they're about to kill the captain, mutiny, the predator starts killing people, <laughs> right? Like yeah. the one person who is like, I'm gonna be captain now, and all of a sudden there's a three death red. You know? <laughs> exactly. Right? And then you have the captain. He like burns that pirate ship down. He's like, at, so then the third act starts. Yes. And now it's like it's me versus the oh. Predator. The image in my head that kicked this whole thing off is just it's rain, it's night, and it's like the pr- yeah. it's the pirate with a cutlass and the predator with the gauntlet, and they're like fighting on the bridge. Oh of the yeah, ship. it's just like oh, it's just... the teaser ad. The teaser ad is it's a pirate flag. It's a skull with the three dots. Pirate... <laughs> oh no, three dots a predator skull. Like you, yeah. you know, he's oh a predator now. skull. Yes, so okay. So then, so then you have it where in the third act it's him versus the predator, big moment. You know, he yep. he you know uh, burns the pirate ship down. He swims ashore because every third act has what is like the oh shit moment, right? Yes. It's, that, it's the additional like oh no, yes. right? Like, we're already in it, and then things escalate suddenly really quickly before you drive into the ending, yep. and then like boom, here I am I'm on the beach, I made it, you know, I'm stranded on this beach, and then he sees it coming out, and that's the first time you actually see the predator, like you actually yeah. see it because it's glitching out because it got burned, it's been in the water, and he's like that's a, a monster and then yeah. they fight, you know, it's like, cause that's like the thing with predators, you're not supposed to see it. Like yeah. you, you shouldn't see it for a while. Right. No, exactly. So, exactly. They fight, you beat it 90 minutes, go home happy. Everybody's that's, happy. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, uh, Cullen Bunn has, I think it's Cullen Bunn. I, I feel like it's Cullen Bunn somewhere on the internet. Cullen has told this story where when he was a kid, him and his dad went and they saw a predator. They had no idea what it was about. No idea what it was about. They thought it was a Arnold, you know, like movie. You were... Yep. And then all of a sudden, it becomes like one of the best movies. Like you're just like, yeah. Oh, there's a predator. What is going on? And then it's like the mystery. And then you're like, what is that? And then oh, dude, it's so good. Yeah. Um. All right. So we should talk about. I'm gonna go through these things. Before yes. I... Yes. A couple of comments. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if there's anything here I wanna. I'm glad people enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like us sitting here uh, uh, talking about uh, comic books. Yeah. This person uh, said, uh, yeah. Cosmic Nerd Studios, I want Sal and Josh to talk about what cheese they'd want their hair to become if all their hair was magically replaced with cheese. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like yeah, it's a I... difficult question. Do you want to be a block? Do you want it to be a soft cheese? Right. I like pepper Jack cheese. Is it shredded cheese? What kind of, you know. Yeah, what, what I mean, about here? yeah, probably, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a Manchego kind of guy. Uh, somebody had a question here. They said the Rom Omnibus is the most premiered Marvel Omnibus of all time. Rom fans are there somewhere. I don't know where though. I brought this up in a meeting recently. Oh, because I was like, 
Rom is a blind spot for me. We always talk about that. I'm a blind spot. People love Rom. But it's a blind spot to me. Yeah, I don't know anything literally, about the Space Knights. They have a lot of fans. Um, we should do this. This, is, this could be a whole theme. Somebody said, uh, they said, you know, Sal loves Spawn. It would be <laughs> hilarious to you guys geek out over any 90s fad or the max. And maybe right. Josh will finally be able to sell split the door for a mini on Tempest or a oh, Welcome yeah. Zombie. Yeah, yeah, that's really funny. We should do it. We we've talked about going deep into '90s stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so I have a question. Not sure if you've answered this before, but I know us uh, fans are in love with Flatline, aka Nika. Yeah. Uh, who was actually owned? She was named by Gleb. I asked Gleb, who's Russian. You know, she's Russian. What would you call her? And he said he gave me the name. Um, do you have any future plans for the character? Yes. <laughs> yay good like, i mean i would that's assume, essentially right? what the, the question is yes uh depending yes. on what uh when this comes out you you might see it <laughs> like yeah. it might uh it might already be out there um oh here uh, yeah, uh i want to see before. josh's original art collection he must have some tucked away uh i have a a pretty good one um we talked yeah, about this you have like stuff where you're like was it was it you and i were talking about this where you're like we have stuff where i'm like i don't even know like what i have I forget sometimes what I have. I have a yeah. friend who has a who has worked in comics for a very long time, and they have a stack of pages they've never looked at. Mm. And he's like, "I'm like, dude, you, you have to have good stuff in there. You that's he, right, yes, you have to have good stuff in there. Like, I I want to go to his house and just like look through it with him. He took pictures of a couple things in there, and I was like, I immediately knew what some of the, the art was from, and, and I was like, dude, you have good stuff. Uh, I have a I have a you know. The, the books that I really like, I have something from. Um, and books that I've worked on, a lot of them I have something from. Uh, so I have I have probably more than I should. And mm -hmm. I've actually considered selling a, a couple pieces. Um, but yeah, I have a I have a I have a pretty I have a I have a pretty uh, good one. This person they said, um, as far as Batman and Robin goes, do you think Maya Ducar will ever make an appearance again? I tried. Really? Uh, and, and this is the thing about her character. I really want to. I want to make sure... I, I say this whenever I work on a book. It's like, I want to bring everything in, as much mythology as I can. With her, it has always been about how do I do it or, organically? Like, what is the reason for her to be there other than I want to? Yeah. And it's been... You know, there was a couple times where I tried... Like, I thought about having her on the island. Because I thought it would make sense for her to be on the island during the yeah. Lazarus. But... I wanted Damien to be separated from his friends in that story. That was yeah. part of it. You know, I wanted him to be kind of alone and away from people. And, and now that he's back in Gotham, um, I have, I did a lot of research on her again. I, I went back through and I reread like all of her stuff um, recently. And I actually was going to text Tomasi about some of it and just ask him a couple questions about her. Um, so yeah, it, it's a matter of, of timing. Um, I really want to though. It just hasn't, I haven't been able to find a place for it organically in the story. Like, I don't always want to, I just want to make sure that when I do it, it's like, it makes sense, you know? Yeah. But we, especially if you have like a, mo if you, if you find out like, oh, it's a perfect time for her, but I already used her because like, I thought it'd be cool just to have her in the story. And it's like, it loses that punch, you know? I've, I've fallen in that trap a couple of times of like, I love this character. I want to put him in and, and they always end up getting cut Yeah, because it's like, if it, I'm running out of pages. I always overplot too, right? So it's like, yeah. you know, when I'm working on outlines, I often find times find myself being like, I have a lot of ideas, and then mm -hmm. you know, seventy five percent of them make it in, um, and stuff gets cut. Like I was working on an issue with Superman, and I realized I was two pages short, and I was like, this one beat has to go, even though I think it's cool, but it was like. You also have to make sure you're not hitting the same beat twice in the same issue. And I, right. and I saw that. It was an issue of Green Arrow I was working on yesterday and I realized I had the same problem. And it was like, I'm you're compressing things down when they should let them breathe. Right. Um, there's two questions here that I think is funny. Like, we could talk about this in depth. But one of them was about, they were asking us about inside baseball stories. And, like, I have, yeah. I have a few, obviously. But they want to talk about the infighting office politics around the hot dog identity. Uh, I actually don't know that one. Oh like, yeah, so I know. I know that suddenly he was Ned Leeds. Yes, and it wasn't supposed to be Ned Leeds, and then all of a sudden it was in that Spider-Man Wolverine special where they were like, "It's Ned Leeds," and then Spider-Man accidentally kills a woman in this issue. It's like, yep, the, yeah. it's like the comic no one ever talks about, but is oddly like an important comic book. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, we could we could do probably a whole episode on that. The next question, um, I'm making notes. I'm actually I'm literally writing down Hobgoblin because <laughs> Hobgoblin. <laughs> I, have, I have a doctor's appointment soon, so I'm like, um, I would love to hear Josh's opinion about Dark Knight's model and Death Model because there aren't too many event books that have a sequel. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting because I didn't really think of it that way. Um, I kind of disagree because you can argue that Zero Hour is a sequel to Crisis. You could argue Infinite Crisis is a sequel to Crisis Universe. So you could argue that Dark Crisis is a sequel to Infinite Crisis. Like. Yeah, but it, are they? Cri- I think like that's a different animal. They're the exact people. same team. That's where I think that this wasn't the, the, the difference is is that it was Greg and Scott on both things. Yes, it was built in. Right. That that's the piece to sort of remember is that <clears throat> when we were working on metal, we knew it was going to end and lead to death metal. Yes. I don't. I'm not even 100 percent sure it was called death metal I, at one point they called it metal two i think it yeah. turned- i have uh, a i have a little bit of insight about that i have a i had a guy who was at dc who told me shortly after metal ended mm-hmm. that death metal was next we knew we knew yeah. and dude we were at before man when was it you know we would go to conventions and we would talk about stuff yeah Right, we would, we would go to conventions and we would talk about stuff, and we just knew. And, and I think we knew, and you can look at it. Right. You can see the DNA of how metal ended, and then how No Justice and Justice League started, and you could see what was going on with, you know, Batman, Superman. Like we knew, yeah, we, we knew how these things were gonna come together to be death metal. So it's it is interesting when we're building out these events to be sequels. I mean, it's even like how things are right now, where it's like you know when dark crisis was ending at one point we were like no events this year no right. event this year we, we had talked about a lot like dark crisis was enough it had been a year long let's take a year off and that it didn't it didn't work out that way but when that conversation happened of like okay well, then what is this year we knew the four events yeah we, we knew so you you always kind of know ahead of time um uh what they are here uh let's see here this person said what I love about comics is how much variety you can get. Me too. Almost yeah. always there is a conversation we had one way or another. Yeah, I, I was talking about this about this too. We were talking about power scaling, and I was like, I don't want definitive answers in comics because I think part of the fun of comics is talking about the comics and debating. Yes. Um, only question I have is, what would you pick to be for a team up book from any side, Marvel or DC? Um, I wanted to do Brave and the Bold for a while as a team up book. Um. You know, at Marvel, I think doing something like Spider-Man team up would, would be yeah. Fun. Marvel team up was such yeah. a good idea. But yeah. yeah, Marvel team up would be really fun. I like when you have these books that are a little bit on the anthology side that are like, here, these two characters meet up. Um, uh, when I was working on this story that I'm doing right now with the Superman action comics, like Brainiac story, you know, Lobo's in it. It's not a surprise when there's a bottle sleeve of Lobos and stuff, and we've been teasing it. Uh, yep. But there was a moment where I wrote in my notebook, Lobo team up. Because I was like, I think it would be a lot of fun to do a Lobo team up book just because he's such a troublemaker. That's true. Uh, <laughs> this has to be, uh, I like this person. Well, if we're explaining stuff Sal loves, it has to be New Avengers. We got you covered. We got you covered. We did <laughs> we that. Can talk, we, yeah. can, we can talk about New Avengers a lot because I feel oh like. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, person asked, this is maybe a longer one. They said, uh, you know, a detailed process, breakdown of your producti- productivity process. I have a process. Yeah, we can get into it. It's yeah. weird. Um, but what apps do you use to write with and keep everything organized? I use a lot of whiteboards. I use a lot of notebooks. And I use... Every project has its own notebook, right? So it's like I have the G.I. Joe. I have you know, the, the Hasbro Universe Energon G.I. Joe stuff here. And, you know, I have one for Dark Ride. I have one for everything. Like Green Arrow has its own. I had one for Robin. And then that just became the Batman and Robin one. You know, right. I had one that was for, like, random event stuff. I, I keep a notebook for everything. I just jot ideas down in it. Um Usually I figure everything out before I start typing, but I just use word. Yeah. I just use word, you know, I, I just type up my scripts. I use the same format that I've used probably uh, forever. This person said, when is Josh going to be on the couch? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> you know, you and I have talked about it a couple of times, but you guys are in uh, New Jersey, right? So yes. it's like, yeah. whenever I come to New York, I've gotten more and more like I'm coming in, I'm leaving. Like, yep. I'm, I'm, you know, so it's, it's something I definitely want to do. What you got to do is bring the couch to a convention. 
it's true. We uh, it's what's w- funny. Two New York Comic Cons ago, uh, you know, we've been denied a panel every year for fifteen you years. This New York Comic Con. Yeah. And uh, but but one time they had like two years ago, we just went into a room to shoot the show, and it was just an empty panel room that they never used. And only after we shot the episode did I look backstage and found there was a couch there. And I was like, oh, oh I could have used the couch. Yeah, getting a couch in there, I mean, you'd have to have like. It would take a lot for you guys to do that. Like that'd be a whole experience. You guys got a booth and put the couch in there, and it was just yeah. like, oh, doing I ship a couch. Forget it. No, we just all we, I, well, we could just do the show on the West Coast. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, you should come out here. And I, I have a couch in here. You can come out here. And Boom! There we go. And, and do some me. Um, the person said, "I want them in, to talk in the future episode about the difference between reading comics when you're a reader and when you're a creator." Mm. Uh, and also for my question for Joshua what is it like having to rebuild the mythology of G.I. Joe from the ground up up and two not only having fit in the modern audience kind of like the ultimate universe in that regard but also to have it connect with other books like Void Rivals and Transformers we should save yeah. that for a, a different one in terms of talking about Energon Universe uh, before yeah. we start we we're talking about how um, I meant to send uh, Sal uh, uh, Duke number one and I, I forgot so the next time we do one of these, we will probably talk a lot about Duke and, and Cobra Commander uh, number one. Yeah. Um, the differences between being a reader, I'll probably stop on this one. There's a lot more to go. I actually yeah. really like it. So if you guys want to continue asking sure. questions, please. Um, the differences, and this is probably the last thing we, we talk about. Um, yeah. The, I got to make a note to myself about something. Um, the differences is difficult because what ends up happening is it's even more so you're, you're, you're more aware of things around the book more. Yeah, right. So do you, reading DC can be challenging because as much as like, I, I really, you know, it, it's part of why, like even what Tom was doing the last few years, because Tom was, uh, Tom King was doing a lot of books that were not in the universe. They weren't as much in continuity. Right. Exactly. So it allowed me to enjoy them differently because I wasn't having ongoing conversations with Tom about his book, you yeah. know, and so it was easier to be like, oh, I'm going to read this without um, knowing too much about it, right? And it's it's hard when you're reading a book and, like, you know the creator sometimes. And you're in – and it's weird because it's, like, with DC in particular, I usually know what's coming in everyone's books. Yeah. Or I have – I might be too opinionated in some areas. But it, so it does create a, a weird dynamic when it comes to superhero books. It's part of why I probably read more non Marvel and DC right now than mm. any. Um, but then with Marvel, it's nice when every once in a while you can get some distance from a book and then just binge it. Like just read, you know, that's, I'll, I'll read a, a Marvel book that maybe a few years old and just kind of like power, power through it. It is funny, like when you know someone and it's like, oh, you know this creator and you're friends with them, whether they're at Marvel or DC, and they hang up at a bar and they're like, here's my plan for two years, you know? And you're <laughs> like, oh, okay, well, I'm never going to read that comic. Or, or yeah. I'm going to read it, but it's like it takes something away from you. And so it can be, it can be, but I will say this it never takes away my love of it. And it's yeah. Like, I still read a lot of books and it's, it makes me happy when I read something that is like, even if it's a continuity book or it's a book that like, I know what's going on in it uh, ahead of time. And then you read it and it's like, man, it's just a good comic book. Good job, everybody. Like That's I, true. I, it does, it does mean something, but there is struggle sometimes. I feel like I have to get distance from a book before I read it. It's why with DC, I usually read everything every week just so I'm behind right now, but usually I would read everything every week just so I knew what was going on in the universe. And then I would also, I obviously talk to creators and talk to editorial. So I have a pretty good idea of what, what's going on sometimes. Marvel, you know, as we discussed, I don't talk to anybody from Marvel, really. Like, it's pretty rare. Um, I don't know anybody in editorial over there. I, I don't, like, know them, know them, you know? No, um, but you know, yeah. you're. I know people, like, you know. You, I, you I, know I, them I, through other people. Them. Like, yeah, yeah, the last time I talked to Tom Brevoort, it was about, this is funny, it was about how much I was loving Fantastic Four. Um, yeah. I talked to Tom Brevoort in person twice, and once it was about how much I loved Avengers, and then once it was about how much I like Fantastic Four. <laughs> so it's like, you know, um, and we had a whole conversation about um, a couple issues of Fantastic Four. There was an issue of Fantastic Four where uh, the kids, where uh, Franklin and Val had to get driver's license. Yeah. Um, and I was like, this is perfect. Right. This is Fantastic Four right here. Like, right. Them having to get, their teenagers having to get driver's license, but it's so they can drive around the. Fantastic, Fantastic Four tub. <laughs> yeah, the tub, you know. So the it's tub. 
Um, but it is it is fun when I get to sit down and read like a you know a Marvel book, and it's funny whenever I'm working for a place, I always end up reading the opposite. Company yeah, more sometimes because you're not as plugged into things. Right. Uh, but with Marvel, I'm always like a little behind, and then I'll start just like I'll suddenly sit down and pick up a hardcover. So like Immortal Hulk, I read the first issue of Immortal Hulk, and then I didn't read it again until it was in its like 30s, I think. Mm-hmm. I maybe read the first couple of issues. I read it. I read until. Um, the Hulk had all his body parts cut up. Yes. And I was like, this book is so good. And it's yep. like, it, you, I wonder if you ever had this. Um, have you ever had a moment where you're like, this book is so good. I have to stop reading it because <laughs> yeah, I want to, I, I want to soak it all in. Like I, you, you recognize it's a good book. And so you kind of want to like wait. And oh, it kind of yeah. sucks because sometimes that could hurt a book, but you're like, I want to <laughs> wait. And then I want to binge read it. Like I want yeah. to use that moment where you're like, Oh man, this book is so good um that yep. one sometimes will slow me down but uh yeah it's it's a weird it's a weird dynamic sometimes when you're you're this and then also but here's the thing how do i explain this i have a very different opinion about when i don't like a book and i'll explain right. why. right when i was younger when i was a kid if I didn't like a book, there were moments where I'd be like, oh, this book is stupid. I don't like this book. Whatever, right? You'd have, like, really negative reactions to it. No one, no one is trying to make a bad book. No one. Right. And when I read a book that I don't like, my first thought a lot of times is... And I, I also... I, I, I don't have the opinion that, like, if I don't like it, therefore it's bad. I do not have that opinion. Yeah. Um, and when I read a book now, if I don't like it, the first thing I ask is, like, what happened? Like, right. in my book. Like what happened? And then I'm like, I feel if if I feel as though it is a book that is not working for a variety of reasons, I feel bad for everyone involved. I never yeah. feel. And I think that's one of the bigger changes that happened to me was that I stopped having any kind of negative reaction that way anymore. I started being like, what is not working with this? And then just feeling bad for everybody involved. Cause you know, and I know this, you know, they know it too. You know, it's pretty rare that somebody puts a book out and they're just like, clueless, like that piece of geniusness, you know, <laughs> worship me. I've seen and that, then, but it's very rare nowadays. It is for that rare. to be it is rare. And so it definitely puts me in a, in a weird spot with it. But on that somber note, <laughs> yes. Well, and I, I, I will to, to reiterate that point really quick before we wrap up. I, I, as, as I get, as I have had more of a rapport with, with, with folks in the mm-hmm. industry it has softened my opinions in some regards where I'm like, it, I, it'd be, it was very easy in being reared by wizard. You know, they trained oh, yeah. me Clown on everything. Yeah. You can, you can call everything like the worst thing in the world. You can say it sucks. And you can be like, what were they yeah. smoking when they made up this idea? And it's like, I think I find that the more untouchable they are, the more flippant I can be about them because they, tra- you know, it's like, I can really rake, like grant morrison over the coals because i know grant morrison a will never watch our show and b doesn't give a crap but you don't know either one of those things just <laughs> you. you do not know you do all right well know. there is one that i'm that certain that of that all right well the one that i'm certain of is still alan moore i i and i and i'm very i okay. have a lot of deference for alan but uh but you know I'll, i do an impression of him and i know that uh people love to see it and i'm like and i and i do it only with love because i'm like Number one, it's a horrible impression. Number two, I know that he's oh, ne- it, he would not be. Upset. You have to save that. You have to save it because I definitely want to. Uh, I want to see it, but I have. To, well, I have any to... any book with Alan Moore's name on it, I have to. I do it in the show, and it's. <laughs> but there's oh, some okay. Halloween episodes oh where okay. we have. We've never talked about Alan Moore before. We have to talk about Alan Moore. Oh, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into some stuff next time. I, I was making yeah. a list here while we were talking, but yeah. Alan okay, Moore. I gotta run. I gotta. Yes. Off. Well, thank Back you so much for watching, everybody. Make to make sure to check out more pre-order your books. Uh, and I, I I say that the pre-ordering of Green Arrow helped push Green Arrow oh, into sure. the into the ongoing. So yeah, no, for sure. Thank you everyone for reading that book, and and I really appreciate you know the word of mouth and and people pre-ordering it. Thank you. Yeah.